Hey guys, Double Wide Six, and today what I'm working on is installing a multi zone mini split. Everything just arrived, I'll show you what I got for this project. So here's a look at what arrived from Amazon. I got a 36,000 BTU multi zone mini split air conditioner heat pump, and the brand I went with this year is Cooper and Hunter. I did a lot of research on their particular brand and I like a lot of the options that they have. There's going to be one outdoor unit and two indoor units. One of these is going to be a wall mount unit. That will be in my basement. And the other unit will be a console unit. And a console unit stands on the floor. So it's a little bit different than the regular wall mount mini splits that you may be used to. And of course I have the uh, line set kits. Everything came, shipped on a pallet, and arrived nice and safe. So we're going to begin installing the outdoor unit. Now you can mount the outdoor unit on the house. In fact, Cooper and Hunter actually sell a wall mount kit. I have opted to pour myself a slab and I've welded up or fabricated a bracket that I'm using to lift the unit so that if, when there's snow it won't affect anything as far as the compressor. So we're going to go ahead and get this set up. You want to make sure that you give your unit the proper clearances. So I'm leaving about a foot behind the unit, a foot to the left, and you should have about 24 inches to the right and of course you want the front of the unit to be completely open. To assist with lining up the snow riser, what I've done is I've taken the styrofoam from the packaging and I'm using that to help line up the holes exactly so everything is squared up and where it needs to be. The compressor for this unit was pretty heavy, so I was happy that my friend came over to lend a hand to help with this install. I really needed his help to get it on top of the snow risers. What we did is we set some blocks on top of the snow risers, and we used a piece of plywood underneath the middle and a car jack to actually lift the unit and lower it on place to the lag bolts that I had pre-attached to the snow risers. It took a little work and wiggling, but we got it to drop down exactly where we wanted it. You just want to be sure when you set the unit, whether you put on a slab or a stand on your house, that you use the uh, anti-vibration rubber that they give you. So they're on all four corners of the unit and it really helps stabilize everything. The unit is shipped with the anti-vibration pads stored down where the valves are, so they're tucked away in here, just so you know. The outdoor unit comes with a drain port that you can hook up to the bottom of the unit. What you would do is connect it to the bottom of the unit, and then you would connect a hose to it. And that way you can draw the condensation away from your house. I'm not using it because I have the snow stands underneath my unit. You can order different size line sets with your unit. So I'm putting in um, two units and the line sets that I'm using are 50 foot and 25 foot and they come with all the wiring that you'll need for it and the thimble to go through the wall and the drain hose. What we're doing here is we've cut a hole in the soffit and I'm up in the attic and I have my friend down below and I'm feeding him the line set. The line set is covered in a white insulation and we're being very careful to 
straighten out the line set and pull it down along the wall so that we can mount it on the house a little later. Okay, I have uh, both the line sets and the communication wire run down the corner here. And what I'm doing to conceal all this is I'm going to be using a rain downspout. And I've put uh, caps on the ends and those caps will get hidden inside the soffit up there and there'll be one on the bottom as well. What we're doing here is we're using a wire snake to pull the line set through a downspout. I used a downspout for this project because I thought it would blend in quite well with my siding. It was a little bit difficult to get the line set through the downspout, but with the help of my friend, we were able to do it and get everything mounted against the house, and it seemed to work out quite well for us. Well, it's about two days later, guys, and I'm working in my basement, and I just opened up my wall mount unit, and I've determined where I want to put it on the wall. It's going to go between the picture and the soffit up there be above the clock, and uh, on the back of the unit is the mounting plate. So the first step is to actually mount this mounting plate on the wall, so that unscrews, there's one screw holding that on, and I put a line that's level on the wall, and I've located the center, and uh, now we're ready to mount the plate to the wall. To mount the wall bracket, you want to use some drywall anchors if you're not hitting studs, and you want to make sure that you secure all four corners. Another thing I want to point out is this bracket is not actually centered on the back of the wall unit, so you just want to be careful that you center it properly. They do give you a center hole, so you can identify it as I did. I've carefully marked where the hole is going to go through the wall for the line set. You drill a two and a half inch diameter hole and it needs to be above your level line on the bottom. According to the plans, it's about two inches up and six and seven eighths from the center of this post for my model. So different models are slightly different. The main thing with drilling the hole is you want to make sure it's pitched downward because your drain line is going to run through there, especially if you're drilling through a wall and then out to the outside of your house. Now this is a basement, so uh, there's some space between the drywall and the concrete wall that's actually behind here. So now that I have the hole drilled, I'm going to run a wire snake through the wall. I've connected and run the wire snake through the hole, and I'll show you the other side. So here's the wire snake coming out, and you can see the walls are insulated, and I left a gap between the concrete foundation and the stud walls when I built the basement. Um, mostly to prevent any moisture from the concrete getting into the insulation. So here's the other end of the wire snake and we're going to use that to pull the line set about seven, eight feet to get it through that two and a half inch hole. Here's a look at the line set they send out. I like it because uh, as I said, uh, and some of you guys may know, I made a video before where I actually used a different brand of mini split and I've upgraded to the Cooper and Hunter because I really like the way their line sets come. They're pre-insulated, they're pre-flared, 
they even cap the ends and if you look at the drain line it's much thicker and with my last unit I had to wrap all the line and that was a lot of work and the lines I think were cheaper this just feels a lot heavier and it's a better quality product they also have the communication cable and just so you know the end with these flat uh, end caps that's going to connect to the indoor unit and these spade connectors and that ground terminal are going to go to the outdoor unit. So what we're going to do is we're going to feed all of these lines up through the wire snake and we're going to try and work them through the hole. Now if you're not sure or you have questions about the line set, you can actually call this company because uh, they're really helpful. I had some questions for them and they were able to answer that and then I just ordered everything through Amazon and uh, so far so good. I'm going to begin by uncoiling some of the line set. I think you can bend it to about a four inch radius if needed. Another thing that I'm noticing right now is these flared connections, they appear to be offset so that they're going to connect directly to the unit easily. So I'm probably going to use these factored flares if I can and then I'll flare the outside. I need about, I think about eight foot to snake through the wall. So I've taped the electrical and the drain line to the line set. Alright big dog, you ready? Yeah, send it. Yeah, this wire snake's getting put through its paces. Having someone to help you when you snake the line set through the wall is really helpful because the soft copper can bend or kink easily. In order to bend the line sets properly, you need to cut away the insulation. So I'm just using a utility knife, being careful not to nick or cut the copper. We're going to remove the insulation, make the bends, flare the lines if needed, and then put the insulation back on and zip tie it and tape it in place. So we already put the wall mount on the bracket. And as you can see, we've indicated on the wall where the little and the big line are going to end. And now we're measuring off the copper line set and we're going to mark how long we need each piece to be because they're already pre-flared for us, which is nice. So hold that parallel with the wall. Okay, got it. That's it. Just a little bunch of kink. That should be fine. Is that 90? Yeah. I guess you can bend, you can bend the rest of it. Yeah, yep. that's pretty good. I did run into a little snag with the downstairs unit. I realized that my tubing bender wasn't made for half inch tubing. So I had a special order a half inch tube bender. I got the tool and I was able to figure out how to bend my 90 degree angles. I found the soft copper bent very easily and you just need to be careful that you don't kink it, especially when you're rolling out that line set. Once I had the 90 degree bend, I then needed to put the insulation back on the pipe. So at this point, I bent my 90 degree elbow, but I realized it was going to be a little bit long. So I cut the end off, and I knocked away any burrs, and then I used my flanging tool, and I set this up, and I just flanged the end myself, and I found this tool to be very helpful. It just holds the pipe tight, and then you drive the handle in until it clicks, and when you're all done, you have a professional looking flare. Here's a close up look. This is the half inch flared connection we just made. 
and this is the factory quarter inch flare and as I said I marked on the wall where they need to be and now all we need to do is connect them to the unit I put a wedge behind the wall unit right here and now all I need to do is make my connections Using two open end wrenches, I was able to tighten the flare connections of the line sets. So I just about have everything buttoned up here. I used some zip ties and I made sure I put the insulation back on because this unit will actually sweat. The flares are on there nice and snug and uh, I think we're about ready to set the unit against the wall and clip it into the brackets. I'm just not sure where exactly the electrical wire runs through so I'm trying to determine that now. I was able to run the communication wire right on top of the line set. It comes through here and there's an opening in the back of the unit where you can feed the wire up to this wire clamp. So you want to feed the wire through the wire clamp and then set up by locking into the terminal block. So there's four wires and one of the things that's nicer about this unit than my other one is these wires came with uh, connectors already on there to be accepted in this terminal block. So that was nice. And uh, we tighten these up and we clamp down the wire to secure it in place. Now, the only other thing I want to do is just use my cell phone. I'm going to take a picture of this, and these numbers, ground, one, two, three, are going to match the outdoor unit. Well, the unit's set up, guys, and I just removed the air filter. I put about 10 ounces of water in the tray to make sure the drain was draining properly, and it was. Just to let you know, you can order a condensation pump. To pump the water out if you're installing one of these in a basement. The other way to do it is to drill a hole through the floor if you have access to an unfinished part of the basement and let it drain into the blue stone under your concrete. It's not going to be a whole heck of a lot of water anyhow. This basement unit is primarily going to be used as a dehumidifier. That's one of the functions on the unit and I'm expecting to use it most of the time in the winter for heating because the unit is also an 18,000 BTU heat pump. Okay, I've moved up to the bedroom and I'm working on putting in the console unit. And as you can tell from where the camera's pointed, we're going to be setting this on the floor. I've already gone ahead and uh, capped off an outlet and uh, I've moved a vent um, that was in the wall here. So I spackled that, I got to sand that and paint it, but uh, what I'm ready to do is set our console in place. Now you'll notice I cut away the baseboard to get a nice flush fit. And to do that, I used a oscillating tool which worked quite well for removing the baseboard. I do like the look of this floor console. It's not overpowering the room or taking up too much space. One of the nice things about this company is they do have a lot of different options. I was originally going to put one of these on the wall, but then I noticed on Amazon that they had these floor consoles. And they also have a unit that's called a, a cassette, and that actually goes in the ceiling. And I was interested in that, but the problem with that in my particular room was that I already have a ceiling fan in the ceiling, and I didn't know if that would quite look great. So uh, this worked out quite, quite well for me because it's actually below the TV, and it fits in there really nice. The plan is to take this console apart so I can get into the line set. I'm going to drill my hole for the line sets and then at that point I'll pull this off the wall. I'm going to finish spackling and get everything painted. So uh, you remove this trim panel by pulling back on these two switches. 
and there's a uh, rope in here that you can remove to completely remove the panel. There's a filter on here, and it's real nice because they make a washable filter, and this will get dusty over time. So at least it's reusable, and I don't have to order those. Now, they give you four screws on this unit, and I already took a look at it. I removed two of them. There's one, two, three, four. So we'll quick get those out. Down here is the last one. So we'll take out those. And this entire panel should pull out from the bottom moving up. You're just going to want to watch this fin up here. So I'm going to open that up and it does stick a little, kind of clips in. There we go. And now we have access to our line sets. You may need a drill extender if you get one of these console units. I got to drill through probably about five inches or so until it gets out the plywood on the back side. So we'll slip it in here, slight downward contour. Now that I have the unit in place, there are some brackets that go on the wall that actually hold it tight to the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and get them installed. And once the unit's hung in place, we're going to start working on the line set. Okay guys, I have the line set fed into the back of the unit. I had a kink in the half inch line, which this is the kink. And uh, I cut this out and I put in a, a union that I was able to pick up at the hardware store that's a flare connection. And I'll show you that on the other side. I've cut off the uh, excess here and kind of stripped it back. And now what I want to do is bend an elbow in here 90 degree and then we're going to kind of push this back in the wall and flare the end. I had to buy a, uh, a bigger pipe bender and I really like this one. It's for half inch, three eighths and a quarter. And I believe the brand is Imperial. Or that could just mean that it's not metric. But uh, I got this on Amazon. I'll, I'll link it down below. So we're just going to put this on here. We're doing quarter inch. A lot easier to bend the quarter inch compared to the half and if you try and bend the half by hand you will kink it so we'll bend it like that and then I'll just carefully support it and spin it back and my connection is here so what I need to do is mark that and we'll put a, a flare on that so I've cut off the pipe and I've reamed the end so there's no burrs on it. And now what I'm doing is I'm using my flaring tool again. This time I'm setting it up for a quarter inch piece of tubing. And I'm taking the form and I'm tightening it down. And it's going to put a nice flare on the line. You want to make sure that you always have your flare nut in place before you go ahead and flare the end. So I now have it all flared and it's time to connect the flare nut to the actual air conditioning unit. Thank you. 
tighten these, you go till they get tight, then you go, you can go back about a quarter turn and then snug it up again. And that'll just seat everything real nice. So it's real, it's tight there. It'll go an extra eighth. That's it. I took a picture with my phone so that we can remember the wiring. One, two, three, and ground. Red, black, white, green. We're going to do the same here. So this is the back side of the floor console. This is the hole in the wall. Now going out to uh, the soffit, I have the drain line. And on the other side of the house, I have the line set. So the line set, I've insulated it, and that runs underneath this room. And that was really hard to get through there, particularly the half inch part. And this is where I got a kink. I told you I had to splice it together with a union. So I was able to get down to the hardware store and find a half inch union, flare union that would work. And I'm just gonna seal that up nice and tight with insulation and uh, everything here should be good to go. I should mention the thermostat wire is also coming out that hole and what I did is I placed it a little bit above the console in the bedroom so that's where that goes through. It's kinda nice it had connectors on it. I just hooked up the drain line. There's a pan right here. It connects right onto the bottom and you can fill it up and test it out. Make sure that it's draining properly and you should always run the drain on the bottom. So I removed the cover off the manifold and this is where my line sets come out and what I'm doing is I'm connecting so A is going to be one line set and B is going to be the next and all you have to do is get a wrench remove these caps and I have these uh, bent and flared and we're just going to make our connections so this one is the half inch line and then the one in front of it for B is the quarter inch line. Alright guys, we're hooking up the manifold. So I'm going to start by removing this and I noticed that this one's going to need an adapter. The bottom one was a little bigger for A. So they give you the adapter. It's in where the the uh, manual is. So we'll tighten that up. That's a five eighths to, to half inch adapter. Next, I'm gonna pull over this half inch line set and line it up so that we can get it started on here. tell you to try and leave 24 inches on this side if you can for servicing. Alright, that's pretty snug, so I'll go back a little. 
and we'll give it half a turn or an eighth of a turn. That should be good. We're going to run 240 out to the disconnect box and to do that I'm using 10 gauge wire and I'm using 10-2 so you can see this wire is marked red because that's one of our lines and this wire is black that's one of our lines and you need a double 30 amp double pole breaker and the only other wire is the ground which is grounded up there on the terminal so uh, this runs out to the disconnect and then from the disconnect it goes to the outdoor unit. A box on the outside so if it needs to be serviced you can uh, disconnect it uh, right here. And this is wired. Um, in here is your line and line, the center two lugs. And then on the outside, this is your load. So those two run back to the compressor. So that's how it's wired up. There's a cover that sits on here to conceal all this. And this is what the service technician would pull. You would put it up like that for the off position. See how it says off there? And then you can flip it over like this and that'll make contact and you have power. Well, I got the wiring done. It took a little while, it was a little bit tight working in here. So I wanna show you what, what I did. Um, as far as the indoor units, the one in the basement I'm calling B, Okay, that line set is line set B. Red goes to one, black goes to two, white goes to three, and the ground is terminated here on this lug. And we did the same thing with unit A, which is the one in the bedroom. A1 is red, A2 is black, A3 is white, and then there's a ground lug. Now over here, we have our lines. Okay, this is coming from the panel. This is high voltage. You have line one, line two, obviously the power is turned off, and the ground. And uh, there's wire clamps to hold all this stuff secure. And I put in, you know, weather tight connections and I labeled everything here. So uh, there we go. We got that all done. So guys, we finally made it to the point where it's time to pressurize the system using nitrogen and then vacuum the lines out and release the refrigerant. At this point, as a homeowner, you want to call in your HVAC technician. They'll be able to do these steps for you and you just get a certificate and with that certificate, that'll warranty your product. And I think Cooper and Hunter's warranty, I believe, is like seven years. So it's very worthwhile to bring in an HVAC technician to do these steps. I'm going to be doing these on my own. I've done it before, and we're going to do it again. Okay, guys, we are ready to go ahead and uh, vacuum out the system. Now, I am not going to pressurize the system. I'm just betting that I did everything right and everything works. And if I screw up, I'm going to have to get someone out here to recharge the system with refrigerant and pay them to vacuum it down and do it all right. Here's my line sets. They're connected here, okay? And these are how you release the refrigerated gas up here. And we want to tie in to this fatter line. The other one's a little bit thinner. This is actually the low side. So I'm gonna put my adapter on here. I had to remove the wire cover so I could access this. So we'll put this on and we'll snug it up. Whatever you do, you don't wanna open these till the very, very end, okay? So that's nice and snug. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna loosen these caps 
there's no gas down here. You pull off the caps on both sides, low and then the high. And I hooked up my line sets to A and B. So you need to open both of these. Now you could vacuum and pressurize these things independently, but this entire manifold's connected together, so we're gonna do everything at once. So all you need to do is open up these caps and loosen the set screw. And as I said, there's, there's no gas here. You're just opening the valve. And you're gonna turn it out, I believe, till it stops. Should stop. Okay. So I'll do that with these three, and then I'll be back. Just wanna make a note, when you're opening up the high side down here, you'll hear some gas escape. And that's because the system is filled with nitrogen from the factory. So we'll get these opened up. Now the uh, service lines that you're, you don't have a line set connected to, you can just let those go. You don't have to open those valves. So at this point, everything's open. And I just wanna show you how I have this hooked up. I have my manifold connected to the pump, and now I'm gonna open this up so that we can vacuum. And I'm gonna open our blue line, this is our low side. And this happens to have four gauges, so I'm just gonna keep the black one closed and this red one closed, because we're not using that right now. And our blue is gonna connect to our adapter, this is our vacuum. So, we're going to secure this on here. It's going to take an extra hand. Hang on. Okay, so everything's connected. Here's my manifold, and we're working on the low side. And down there, you see that 30 inches in mercury? That's what we're going to pull this down to. I don't have a micron gauge, so I'm going to let this vacuum pump run for 30 minutes. So we'll turn that on, we'll let it run, and that should vacuum our lines. Okay guys, it's been about 33 minutes, and we are on the gauge. Bring you in there. We're at uh, negative 30 inches of mercury. So at this point, I'm gonna close off my manifold. both blue and the yellow. All right, so we have a vacuum there and I'm gonna turn off our pump and I'm gonna let this sit. I still have the low side connected. I'm gonna let this sit for like a half an hour and I'm gonna see if that needle drops. If it doesn't drop, we're gonna go into the inside and fire these things up. All right, I let it sit for at least a half an hour and uh, that low side did not budge, so that's good. And uh, I'm gonna unhook the vacuum pump. This doesn't need to be hooked it anymore. And I'll take you over to the side. You can see I put the caps back on my lines. And at this point, all we have to do is release the refrigerant. We're gonna release it um, out of the low and high up top here on this manifold. And we're going to leave our gauge connected. And uh, we're gonna turn this thing on and we'll go through the uh, test run procedure. Okay, I'm gonna begin on the high pressure side. I've taken my wrench loosened up this service cap. These are both loose. And what we need to do is we're gonna back out the high side. So 
So we want to turn it a quarter turn, wait about five seconds, and then uh, close it. And then we'll open it back up slowly again. So that was about five seconds. And you can hear the uh, refrigerant going out of there. Just taking a look at the gauge, you can see it's going up. That's why you want to leave this uh, low line on there. So we'll back this out. There's a little ring on here that'll stop it from coming all the way out. So you just back it up to the snap ring. It stopped and that's going to be it for that one. And we'll do the same with the low side. Put our service caps back on and snug them up with a wrench. And we're going to check our gauge. The low gauge is reading about 215 PSI. We're going to add power and we're going to go through the startup procedure. I've come inside. This is the bedroom console unit. And I use the thermostat. Now there is a remote control. And I've set it to the cool mode. And I've turned it all the way down to 62 degrees. It's as low as it goes and I've been standing here about three minutes and it's definitely blowing very nice cold air. I'm now going to go down to the basement. I'm now looking at the basement unit and this one has a remote control, no thermostat. And I've set it to 62 degrees and cool mode. Look at that, lights up, opens up. and we have air blowing so I'm gonna let this run about 10 minutes we'll see how cool it gets and we're gonna check the low pressure gauge on the manifold both units are running on full speed and we're coming in just below 120 when I put it on turbo so we want to be within a range of uh, 115 to 125 so that's looking good I'm gonna quickly unhook this there we go it's unbelievable how quiet these units are 
I have it on the lowest fan setting and you you can barely hear it and I've I've got one of these temperature guns and we'll just take a look at the temperature 36 degrees Fahrenheit that is really cold and I'm just going to check a wall across the room to give you an idea of the temperature Check this 61 and I have the thermostat set to I believe it's 62 so really cool nice unit here all right guys, about a week later, I've had the units in and running and everything's been working out really well. At night, I've been running the console unit in our bedroom and uh, I gotta tell you, we've had a lot of hot weather lately and this unit keeps up no problem. Uh, most of the time I need to turn the thermostat up because it gets too cold in the room. So I'm still kind of figuring out what temperature we like I've been running it at about 73 or 4 degrees and that seems to really cool us down. Um, as far as installing the unit, everything went as it should. I was really happy that I could do all this stuff myself and uh, it wasn't too hard to do. I just had some basic tools, a vacuum pump, I had the uh, gauge set, a couple pipe benders. I needed to get this bigger one for half inch line, a hole saw with an extension bit, and finally the uh, eccentric flaring tool. This was very helpful because you got to kind of calculate your bends in order to not need to flare the ends. I was trying to use the factory ends once or twice, but I was happy I had the flaring tool because that's what I ended up doing since I already had the elbow. Um, as far as why a mini split, because some of you might ask some questions, and mainly it's because I can do it myself, and the amount of energy that you're saving, from what I read online, is about 40%. I also spoke with the people at Cooper and Hunter, and they were very helpful in allowing me to determine whether or not I wanted a ceiling cassette unit or a floor console in the bedroom. And after I talked to them, I really knew that the floor console was what was going to work best. You also have the option of uh, having uh, an oversized outdoor unit. So I put in a 36,000 BTU unit. So I could, uh, right now I have two head units connected to it. I could possibly down the road add a third. So uh, I'm just happy to say everything worked out and uh, this was a fun video and hopefully you guys learned some things and I'll put links below to all these tools and to the uh, mini splits that I installed and you can kind of customize that however you might want to on Amazon site or you can call them and uh, one other thing I wanted to point out is uh, if my video is not helpful enough their videos are really helpful I learned a lot of things as far as installing just from them so guys, if you're not a subscriber, think about subscribing. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, just put it down in the comments. Take care.